I discovered something yesterday, Ron. Um, mm. Our show is much nerdier than I realized. Nerd alert! That is actually the most annoying thing I've heard in my life. <laughs> Funny you would speak up. Ron, I discovered we don't have, among the four of us, just one valedictorian. We have two. Oh, my. Okay, mine does not count. <laughs> yes, it does. It I, does. I am from the everyone gets a trophy generation. So if your GPA was 4.0 or higher, you automatically got valedictorian. There were like 30 of us. What was your GPA? Oh, wow. 4.0. And so that makes you the? Valedictorian. No. <laughs> Nerd alert! <laughs> At least co-valedictorian. Co by 30. <laughs> I'm just still shocked that you think you just realized this yesterday. Why do you do this to me? <laughs> I sometimes forget things. No, I didn't not... know this. So, yeah, you forgot that we talked about this a couple months ago. But also... I was probably gone. You... No, you were there. You just are now realizing you and Dario are nerds? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I have sometimes have a self-awareness problem. <laughs> I never thought of Dario as a nerd. I... Well, you and Dario are the same person, but different. <laughs> Back up on that? What? You're the same, but different. We do have the same... Uh, Myers Briggs type. We, we found that out. Oh, right. There, between the four of us, there are two personality types in this room. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's nerdy as well, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> but I bring this up because I also was valedictorian, and it was one of the more unpleasant experiences of my life. Why? I know it sounds weird, right? Yeah, um, you'd think it'd be like so fun. No, um, I had. I don't know why I went for straight A's. I don't know why I did that. Uh, like I got straight A's my first semester of my sophomore year because in high school where I was is 10th, 12th grade. Okay. 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 So I was like, oh, I got straight A's. Look at that. You know, because I remember everybody telling me when you get to high school, it counts. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now it matters. Right. Like you could do anything you want in younger grades and no one cares about that. They'll never find out how bad your grades were in seventh grade or something. Um, and so I did it. I was like, well, I wonder if I could do that again. And I just kind of kept going. Mm-hmm. But I was a regular kid. Like we had AP in our school. We had all the all the acronyms and you all didn't the do smarty AP pants. Stuff. No, not once. Okay. Didn't want to. Not interested. Oh, so a legit four point. And I, yeah. Well, and and we also this was no fault of my own. Our school also did not have what's called weighted grades. Mm -hmm. So uh, you oddly enough, Daria, you had weighted grades at your school, but it didn't matter. Uh, yeah. At one point. I had like a 4.3, I think, because I did take AP classes, and then I went to like a tech school, and that wasn't weighted, so it brought <coughs> my GPA down. <laughs> Nerd! <laughs> <laughs> my GPA was at 4.3. <laughs> no, I'm just teasing, because uh, I can say that because I'm also a geek here. But um, so, yeah, so a school that has weighted grades would be, if you're taking AP class, honors class, you actually would get more than an A mm -hmm. in numbers. Mm -hmm. So you could have somebody with like a 4.8. Or a, like a five something probably, right? If you took a full roster of AP classes, it would, in theory, be possible to get a 5.0. So whoever had the highest GPA, whether it was like 4.3 or 5, that person in a school with weighted grades would be the valedictorian. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. In my school, no weighted grades. The best you could do is a 4.0. Regular track courses and honors classes weighted the same. So we had probably like six or seven valedictorians. Okay. It's not my fault. I didn't I didn't make that that rule. Okay. And in their defense, them being the smarty pants kids that took all the honors classes, uh, I was in a band in high school and we were pretty cool. <laughs> and so I, my senior year I was playing a lot on weekends and such. And so I had a pretty light course load. As in my last semester of senior year of high school, I was in concert band, jazz band, stage band, <laughs> and study hall in the band room. <laughs> and there might have been a second study hall in the band room, but I don't remember for sure. So four of my classes were in the band room. So, okay, they might have been in AP chemistry. You were in band. I was making music. So you mm -hmm. cheated. You to be smart. Cheated. That's music. not cheating. I, 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 I completed all the course requirements for graduation and got straight A's. I did. And I had to work really hard. I remember I studied so many hours. I had to be a try hard to get straight A's in regular classes. I didn't take AP because I wasn't smart enough for it. But when the smart when when the announcement came out about who was valedictorians, my friends didn't believe me, <laughs> and the, and the smart kids were like ridiculing me. They were mad. 
oh, they were so insulted that someone of my level of intelligence would be associated with their brilliance. <laughs> I mean, talking, like I was getting <laughs> people talking junk about me on all sides. So I remember vividly when names were announced during graduation, they asked us to stand. And I remember I hung my head. I like put my head down Aww. because I was, I felt so bad. That's sad. Now, I was trying to challenge myself. I wasn't saying, how can I scam my way into being valedictorian? I really was. Like, it was self-challenge, and I was doing some things in life, but very bandy mm -hmm. towards the end. <laughs> um, and it seems like that's the goal, right? For, for high school kids, what they start to be told, and college kids, you got to be the best academically. That's how you make it in life. That's the recipe. If you're a valedictorian, if you're Daria... You're going to be basically the next Warren Buffett because you were, <laughs> because you were valedictorian. Right? I mean, that's the message kids are told, right? Figure out what you're going to do. Do the best you can. Be the best you can be. Get straight A's, yeah. and life's going to work. But they also want you to pad your resume, so join every club, right? Whether you attend the meetings or not, you can say you were a member. And be a National Honor Society, even if that means nothing other than showing up at a ceremony and then doing nothing else. Uh, but be in that. Uh, but there, the New York Times had a thought-provoking commentary. It's called A Promise to Grads with No Promise. It's a, a speech, so to speak, to kids who are not valedictorians and tryhards like Daria and I. <laughs> Mornings with Brian, a.k.a. two tryhards and two cool people. Uh, I think I'm cooler than you. Well, that's Ooh. true. That's true. <laughs> One really tryhard, a kind of tryhard, and then <sighs> Lauren and Ron. What are Lauren? Are they chopped liver? They're they're pretty cool. Well, you didn't get straight A's, did you? I didn't get straight A's. No. I mean, you're cool. I'm saying I'm a tryhard. Hmm. Parents are not going to like me for this conversation, but I wouldn't say I regret being valedictorian. But I think I would have been better off not getting straight A's. Well, why do you say that? We'll get to it in just a moment. Oh, okay. According hmm. to, the, to the New York Times, here's an article from a woman named Megan Stack. It's a promise to grads with no promise. She said, it's high school graduation season, time to cheer the teenage achievers, especially the overachievers, and send them off to campus adventures in incipient adulthood. This year, though, I want to talk about the other graduates, the one without honor society stoles or academic medals or college plans, the one who's, ones who still don't know what they could or should do, who taste a tinny dread when the band strikes up pomp and circumstance. Mm. I'm talking about the students who flailed academically, never discovered any particular talent, drifted unnoticed in the halls. The kids who got into trouble and now think of trouble as their natural habitat. The poor kids, the dwellers in volatile homes, the abusers of substances, the college rejects, and even the high school dropouts. If I could give all those kids a graduation gift, it would be this plain but important truth. Everything can still be fine. Yep. Not easy, necessarily, but fine. This is almost certainly true, no matter what seemingly hopeless mess they've made of their affairs or bleak vision they've developed of their own abilities and future. Virtually every American 18-year-old has more options and more time than they've been led to believe. Mm -hmm. This is clear to me now, having lived long enough to watch old friends rebound from seemingly ruined lives to happy, stable, and prosperous adulthoods. And, on the other end, Noticing that some of my most promising classmates fizzled out upon contact with the world beyond our own little town. There are plenty of kids, of course, who turn out more or less the same you'd expect. But the whole process strikes me as infinitely less predictable than suggested by the mechanical churn and sort of the K-12 assembly line. Young people should be told and should believe that their destiny is not shaped in high school. Their personalities are still coming together in the tissues of the brain. Time is on their side. And say what you want about Americans. We like underdogs. Cheer come from behind wins and are generous with second chances. Mm -hmm. I like that. Why? Because the vast majority of high school graduates would fall into that camp. You know, the honors are like the top 10%. And, you know, there may be another 10% who exceeded in in music or athletics or some other field and maybe they weren't academically as gifted but they still had their measures of success and they're being fawned over at graduation but those the other ones who just kind of 
you know, they're there. I went to school. You know, I, I obviously did well enough that I got my diploma, but I, I don't really know what I want to do. I don't know what I'm good at. Maybe I'm not good at anything. When they've got those kind of thoughts, it's good to be reminded, you know, it's okay. You've got plenty of opportunities, a lot of time ahead of you. Try something. If you don't like it, try something else. Yeah, Forbes had an article called, Sorry, Overachievers, C's are all you need in business. Hmm. And then it goes on to say, you've probably heard before that C's get degrees and A students work for C students. And Forbes is like, it's true. I've never heard that. Yeah, A students Hmm. work for C students. And they go through all the reasons why in this piece, but it's um, C students have honed in passion. They're not afraid to take risks. They don't sweat the small stuff. They really want it. They, I mean, they go through, like, the character qualities of those individuals are much more aligned to success than the person that is anxiety-ridden, trying to get straight A's and working too hard. All right? I mean, look at your own high school classes. I, I was amused to see on Facebook the other day, there was a particular group of high school girls that were the popular girls. They're still hanging out in our hometown. Huh. Good for them. I mean, in some respects, yes that's what they want to do if that's what they want to do but you know you have these conceptions of what success looks like and he tells a story or she tells a story in this uh, new york times piece that's pretty powerful she says this in my senior year one of my friends got pregnant with her shambolic boyfriend and decided to have a baby and keep the baby of course Mm. Uh, when i went off to college she stayed behind in her parents house in the next town working in a coffee shop and eventually taking classes at a community college i visited her when i came home on breaks she seemed the same Deep dimples and wry jokes, and I'd hold her baby awkwardly and pretend to think it was exciting that she was a mother. Secretly, I was horrified. We'd been young together, sharing coffee and in, in, in the donut shop and um, looking at starless nights and, and, and la- laughing until we choked. Now she languished on a barren suburban street, cartoons squawking, coffee tables sticky with leaking sippy cups, I couldn't believe she'd gotten trapped like that. As in, her friend is such a failure, you know. Oh, Mm. no. (laughs) Now that friend lives a few hours from where we grew up. In the kind of scenic New England town you visit and take pictures of the fall leaves. Time unfolded well for her. She got her nursing degree, worked in hospitals, met a new man, had another baby. As we moved deeper into adulthood, Facebook started to suggest that her positions had reversed. That she now luxuriated in a freedom I had lost. As I slogged from the milky, sleepless mess of early motherhood to the chaos of toddlers in elementary school, she was launching her own kids into adulthood and taking up mountain biking. I had raggedy nails and new circles under my eyes. She had a golden retriever, a Tesla, and spontaneous getaways with her husband. (laughs) Now, not to say all of the decisions in there are good decisions. I think it goes without saying on a Christian station. We we could go in commentary about that. We're not going to. But it's that, like, we do that. Oh, no, you've made a mistake as a high school senior. Oh, too bad you're doomed your forever. Your life is ruined. Right. Yeah. To what extent have you guys seen this play out in your own lives? I, I've seen it. I, I think we need to remember that success looks different for different people. So I've got one friend from college who just barely skated by. Honestly, I think people are kind of impressed he graduated. Uh, <laughs> he's uh, he, he also works in radio, and he's are arguably doing better than me um, because he's just a very cool, charismatic guy and people just latch onto that. And I'm, I'm very happy for him. Mm-hmm. Uh, we've got another set of friends. Both of them dropped out of college and um, the husband uh, makes a good living in a factory and they've got a child and he can support his wife to be a stay at home mom. And they're very happy. Have you seen it, Lauren, where like seemingly opposite things happen to people? The, the losers become successful and the overachievers are struggling. Yeah, I think so. Um, I don't know if I have specific examples just right off the top of my mind, but I think we just make someone being 17 and 18 and they have to make these huge life decisions and it changes their entire life when that's not true. I've I've lived so many lifetimes since I was 18. Yeah. I've changed career paths. I've changed what I want to do. I've changed my likes. I've changed what I want to do with my life, where I want to live. That changes over time, but we act for high schoolers, we act like this is the only decision they can make right now. It'll change the rest of their lives. I mean, parents in your position, it usually starts there. 
yeah. with with mm-hmm. little kids it's like oh i sure hope he tests gifted right. if he doesn't <laughs> test gifted it's all over and then you know okay now he's gifted now oh boy i hope he's good at baseball because that's the key to college mm-hmm. yeah to the five-year-old mm-hmm. you know and then you get in this rat race where parents mm-hmm. convince themselves there's college scouts in the stands and academic success is the key to their future and it appears as if that may or may not be true. I, not, I would say none of that's true, but it could be true. It could be true. But not necessarily. Mm. No. So how, how will you and Eddie battle against that? It's so tempting. You know, have you thought through how you're going to, like, will you care if Trey gets C's and D's, fails a class now and again? Um, if he's actively not trying. That would bother right. me. That would bother me. But if he's doing his best and he's, you know, trying his hardest, great. It's, I don't care if you get A's or not. What if he doesn't like sports? That's fine. I don't like sports. <laughs> you played softball. Yeah. Eddie played baseball. It's like Eddie he played needs every to single sport this. that ever existed. So. Well, but isn't that his favorite? <laughs> is baseball? His favorite is baseball. Yes. So you're gonna make Trey play baseball, aren't you? No, not if he doesn't want to. What's wrong with you? I'm not gonna push him to do things he doesn't want to do. His dad's also a. a a pianist and a singer and so there's plenty of options of things he can do and he can do none of those things it's tough to resist we actually had to move to a different community to get away from the if you don't get all the achievements Mm -hmm. you're a failure Hmm. and i just i don't roll like that i can't i can't do that and honestly i think i learned from being an overachiever it's just not all it's cracked up to be like, if I put that on my resume right now that I had a 4.0 in high school, someone would laugh at me. They'd say, why do you have your high school on your, you're yeah. a 45-year-old man. Take that off of there. <laughs> I was even talking to my wife the other day, and she was like, she said, degrees now go at the end of a resume. Because it's not the main thing that people are looking for. They're looking for your experience and what you're good at. Yeah. And I was like, well, what about me? I have a master's degree. Wouldn't I put that as a headline? She's like, no, put it at the end. <laughs> That's humbling, isn't it? Mm-hmm. Especially mm-hmm. when so much emphasis is put on this academic success. So how do we define success for our kids as believers? Yeah, we had a teacher text in. They said, I'm an, a high school teacher and a mom to teens and a college student. I love this article. Our focus needs to change. I always tell my students and my own kids, it's okay to not know what you want to do when you're 16 or 18 years old. Also, grades don't define you. I tell my students that all the time. It's so, I mean, it's so true. I'm so glad she tells her students that. Um, Sarah and I are, we're not apathetic about their grades, but I, they know if they got straight C's and some D's, I'm not upset. Mm-hmm. Somehow I blame teen movies for this. I think we've gotten into our heads that like 16 to 18 is like peak existence. <laughs> <When they're... laughs> yeah, like high school musical. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but there's Summer. there's so much that comes after that. Your best years are way ahead of you when you're that age. And like like we said, if you make a mistake, it's more than likely not going to ruin your entire life. Yeah, and so again, if you got straight A's, whatever, I love you. If you're a high achiever in school, good good job. There's nothing wrong with that. You just have to look at why you're doing it. I mean, some people can't help it. And notice that it's okay for you to be good at that, and it's okay for other people to be good at other things that's not school. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I still remember this guy I was good friends with. He got straight C's, right, and some D's, and shocked the whole school when he got, like, a perfect score on his ACT. <laughs> it's the type of, type of learning that he's better at. He was, But he was so smart, he was kind of just bored with school. Yeah. yeah. So like, what a bunch of losers. I'm going to go home and play <laughs> yeah. or hang out, whatever I'm going to do. I'm not saying that's the route to go, but he seems pretty happy. Yeah, and I think sometimes just like your brain develops later for different things. I was so horribly bad at math. Like so, like so bad. I'm no wonder we're friends. And mm-hmm. now I think if I were to take those classes, I would understand better. Mm-hmm. I think I just needed a little bit more time for my brain to develop in a different way to understand. Well, one of the best decisions I made was I found out that the high school requirements in Minnesota when I was a kid in the 90s, you didn't have to take uh, math and science every high school, every year of high school. Mm -hmm. I was like, wait, I don't have to take math and science my senior year? Not doing it. I'm out. (laughs) I'm out. Like, I didn't take it at all. I didn't care. Mm -hmm. Big deal. Look at me now. 
using a calculator and not knowing any physics. I think Zagreus I'm okay. Theorem. <laughs> yeah, physics. I didn't want to take that. Whew. I'm I'm pretty good. I could pick up this uh, napkin here and drop it on the ground. Physics is awful. There it goes. Physics. <laughs> I hated that class. A for me. <laughs> so I guess I wasn't that much of a tryhard. Well, Lauren, I don't know about that. Come on, just give me, <laughs> lie to me a little bit. No. <sighs> Christian. <laughs> <laughs>